Hello, my name is Neil Potter with Improving Your Small Business and today we'll discuss how to start a small business, some do's and don'ts. And so what I've done here is summarize some of the things I've seen over the years of things people have done particularly well to get started and things that I personally would avoid or do less of if I were to start again. So on the do's to consider, now there are many things to do, but here's a few of them to kind of think about. Uh, first one is on money. And so uh, when you start a small business, obviously you want to make money, but the idea you have may or may not be amazing. So a lot of people would think, particularly in the kind of chat forum kind of level, uh, that their new idea is amazing and they're going to make a lot of money. And so they just want to get started and quit their full time job. And so my input to that would be uh, work part time until you have an income uh, to survive upon. If you already have a job, a full time job, I would say keep it until you can prove for sure uh, that the new small business you want to start is actually going to be you no know, good and, and generate income. Uh, you, you might have an idea which you believe is amazing. Uh, but you don't know it's amazing until you actually put it into practice and try it out. And so I've had many amazing ideas over the years. And so they're amazing until I try them. And then I find they're not amazing or nobody actually cares or nobody is going to buy it. And so everybody's guilty of this. I am too. And so the lesson learned is to try a small scale, uh, get your name out there, prove the amazingness of it. And then when you're happy with that, then you can quit your full-time job. So back in 1990, my business partner and I had an idea for a small business, uh, just the two of us, but we were fully employed uh, by another company, a big company in our local town. And so we actually did the small business for a year part-time, uh, building materials and training courses and doing consulting, whatever, uh, uh, just to kind of figure out is actually worthwhile. Uh, people are going to buy it and then bit by bit we're going to left our full-time position so we were fairly risk averse at that point and we also had a the full-time job and this kind of new business and so i think the lesson learned is that uh, unless you actually try the company you'll never know but if it doesn't work out what are you going to live on are you going to consume your you know, your savings, uh, personal savings, they're going to make it work? And how long can you do that for? And so I would say you need to, what I would do rather, is actually start on a small scale, going to get the word out there and kind of approve it's an amazing idea uh, and then quit the full-time job. Now back then, at the very beginning of our first, first company, uh, neither of us had many expenses, kind of like apartment rent and whatever. We had uh, paid off cars. Uh, we had no other debt <clears throat> and therefore we didn't need much money uh, to live on. Uh, that is not true kind of now with a family and kids and house and dog and whatever. Uh, but back then we could do it. So it was a careful calculation and a lot of risk mitigation to going to start the first company so we actually could survive that. The next one would be to get legal and accounting assistance, uh, but not a retainer, but like a one time event uh, to set up the company correctly. And so... I'm not an accountant, I'm not a lawyer, uh, they know things better than gonna you and I probably do. And so just, I would say, meet with one of them uh, and get some advice on the kind of business you want, the kind of regulations you have to follow, the kind of uh, documents you wanna put in place and gonna get it set up. So if you have a business partner or partners you're gonna work with, uh, get things in writing. In our case, there's two of us in the first company. And so we met a corporate lawyer uh, he basically helped us kind of set up some agreements about, you know, how the expenses will be shared, uh, revenue will be shared, who owns the company and how to dissolve it. Very simple kind of stuff, uh, but things we did not know back then. And so I think it was a very good use of our kind of a bit of a money uh, for a few hours to kind of get that figured out. When you actually run the business, track money, expenses and sales uh, from the outset, you will eventually need to file taxes and work with an accountant probably um, and then do bookkeeping. And you want a simple way to kind of do that at the beginning. It could be a spreadsheet. It could be a bit more advanced like QuickBooks. It's probably more than you need at the beginning. Uh, but kind of set it up correctly so you can track things and you have good receipts. And so there are plenty of videos on YouTube and other websites for uh, kind of a bookkeeping 101 that probably would be adequate to kind of get going. And then when you're going to get fancy and lots of money, 
And you can hire a bookkeeper to kind of do it. In our case, one of us actually does the bookkeeping, my business partner, and so uh, using QuickBooks. Uh, but in my other company, my smaller company, uh, I just use a spreadsheet that is adequate to keep my accountant kind of happy. So one thing you'll need to plan for is taxes, uh, unavoidable, and you want to do that correctly at the beginning first time. So get an accountant uh, to help tell you how to withhold things, uh, what the deadline should be, like estimated quarterly taxes and annual taxes, and then other government filings. Uh, different states and different countries have different filings uh, to kind of show you exist and kind of what you're doing. Even if you make no money, uh, no income, and you have expenses or even nothing, you have to kind of file a report uh, annually. So uh, make sure you know all of the details of kind of what to do, and your accountant will kind of help you uh, figure that out. Now, I've noticed over the years uh, that a lot of small businesses, before they start, uh, uh, want to get loans. And so they are focused on negative money. Don't know quite why, probably because they think a loan is free money and not their money. And they're not thinking about the interest rates and the payoffs and whatever. And so, for example, on a chat forum, maybe every day we see five or six people say, I want to start a business. I have this brilliant idea. I just need a $100,000 loan. Uh, it's going to get going. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to triple my money in a week anyway. So what's the big deal? And so they're focused on negative money, okay? Uh, credit cards and loans, okay? How much can they get away with? Because in their head, they're telling themselves it's free money. It's somebody else's money without figuring out, oh, I have to pay that off or with interest. And it could be credit card, 20% interest. It could be one of these special loans, 30 to 40% interest, which is a total disaster. And so uh, what they don't focus on so much is actually sales and positive money. And so I think the most important thing you can do is probably avoid negative money altogether. That's what I would do personally and focus all my attention on positive money, uh, which is going to getting sales and getting cash flow into the company. And so just be wary of any thoughts you're having on negative money as if it's going to be free, uh, where you really want to focus on sales and actually building a revenue stream for the company. So what are some things to consider to not do? Again, this is the Neil personal list. Uh, pick and choose from these as you kind of see fit. Uh, don't get a loan unless you know for sure you can make money. Now, if you want to sell ice cream, you probably need an ice cream machine, whatever that is. If you want to do design work, could be um, floral design work or cat design work or whatever design work, uh, you probably need a license for software. Or if you want to be a skilled labor, a plumber, electrician, whatever, uh, you'll need tools to kind of do that with too. But my input would be to only get the tools you need and the ones you can actually afford and the ones you know for sure are going to cause you to going to get uh, generate more sales and revenue to going to pay that off again. So you're going to grow slowly. But don't get a fancy machine when you have no way to pay off the debt of the fancy machine. Okay, And so... Uh, before you do the loan or get the loan or whatever, you might try five scenarios. Okay? Actually do some math on it. Just go on a spreadsheet or a piece of paper. Uh, scenario number A or letter A, uh, worst case, you make no money in a year or no money in two years. Okay? You might have a good idea. You might be a sound business person, uh, but there are no customers yet. They're coming. You don't know when they're gonna come because you're marketing and you're kind of selling yourself uh, to an audience. So worst case, if you got a loan for something, now how are you going to survive? You know, where's the money going to come from to eat and pay rent and mortgage and keep kids happy and fed and, and whatever you have to do. Okay. Uh, no kids, dog, cat, mice, you know, you name it, you're going to have to feed. Uh, option B or scenario B, if you make a little bit of money, maybe a minimal, maybe you make $5,000 in a year, <coughs> or maybe you make 10000 something kind of small, okay? Uh, but that's kind of what you make in a year. Uh, how are you going to survive on that, given you have a, a particular loan, maybe, and a debt to kind of pay off? Uh, conservative, and then maybe better case, and then best case, okay? Now, do not assume you're going to get best case. I have started two companies. I'm on a lot of chat forums with other companies that are starting out. I very rarely see anybody with best case. If there's one guy I knew in New York, actually very smart kind of guy, a very good business person, 
very creative and the first year made a killing okay he made a killing second year not so much third year not so much fourth year not so much again and so he struck it rich in the beginning because he consumed that money uh, although he's very conservative so even if you get a best case in the first year there's no guarantee you're going to get a best case in every year so uh, put out the scenarios and then combine those with you know paying cash for things do you have cash? Can you, you know, can you use your own cash? If you get a lease for something, you now what is the lease payment for the item you want to lease, like a machine? Uh, if you were to loan it, get a loan for it, uh, what is the uh, implications of that? You now what what is the interest rate, and can you afford to pay that every time you have to pay it off? Uh, could you buy a second hand? Maybe maybe you have cash, and you can find a suitable machine or device. Uh, that is actually just a discard from somebody else. They they want the new thing, and they're going to give you or they're going to sell you the older thing. But it works perfectly well, and maybe that's a really good way to kind of get going. Your customers are not going to know if you have the second hand one or the brand new one. They won't even understand it. You know, no, they won't know. Okay, so uh, you have to just going to uh, use it and uh, kind of make money out of it. Then maybe later you have money for the brand new phone, the fancy version. So do some math and lay out the scenarios so you know for sure, maybe for a year or two years, where you're likely to be. And then pick a case um, that you can actually live with, you know, uh, that you will not starve to death or have to shut the company down or get a full-time job again um, or whatever. Uh, make sure you have some data that uh, kind of shows this. In my world, what I would do is go with the worst and the least worst, maybe conservative case, and my conservative would be the best case for me. Okay, if I hit you no know, the the jackpot, great. Okay, uh, but I'm not going to guarantee that. My first company, which still still running today, <coughs> is 35 years old, 34 years old, and so it's been a steady growth upwards. But there's been a roller coaster. Okay, we've had wars and recessions and depressions and COVID and no, Y2K and whatever, okay. And so there was no guarantee of a steady anything, you know, in the universe. Uh, I had a company once I knew in uh, Pennsylvania, and they were a competitor of ours, but they were also friends. And the first thing they did to start off was get a CFO. And we had like, we have no idea why, why are you getting CFO? Well, they wanted to look impressive. They wanted venture capital and they wanted loans and they wanted people to, you know, uh, give them money and business and whatever. And the way they were going to do that is by having a CFO, because a CFO looks like you're a solid company and you're mean business again. Okay? The CFO can't do anything. Okay, they can't generate any revenue. This comp company in Pennsylvania was do what we kind of do. They were bigger, you know, four or five people. We are just two people. Uh, they were very good people, they were very skilled, uh, we liked them a whole bunch, but spending $100,000 on a CFO or more for no apparent reason more than to look impressive seemed to us a complete waste of time. We never said those words, we thought those words, okay? uh, they actually went out of business for other reasons um, and they got rid of their CFO. You don't need to see anything, okay? you just need to do work, you need to sell and do work and make money and keep the money. Okay, uh, that's kind of running a small business. Uh, similarly, don't get an office uh, or space unless it's critical. It might be critical. Maybe you need a space to meet people or manufacture or whatever, but can you rent a small part of somebody else's space that they're not using? Uh, make it kind of cheap for a while. Can you work in your garage? Or if you're in the UK, garage. Okay, I don't care which one. Uh, can you do something small scale to prove your kind of worth? Uh, and then kind of expand from that versus getting a N thousand square foot space that's going to cost you, you know Y thousand dollars or whatever uh, to rent and have you have no revenue guaranteed for nothing but you have a guaranteed rent again. Again, so uh, my view of the world is become more conservative and either start smaller or start in a free space somewhere or start in your bedroom and kind of get it going and then use the revenue to then uh, justify a bigger space. Bigger spaces are fine, you can do more, uh, but only if you can afford the bigger space. Now, there may be occasions where you want to employ people uh, to kind of build up your business, uh, do other jobs. Uh, I would say uh, a lot of interviewing. People out there are amazing, and people out there are terrible. Okay, Some are awesome to work with, and they will do an awesome job all the time, 
they'll be your best workers forever and some people are lazy as it can be and they want handouts and they roll their eyes and they don't want to work and you can't make them work okay which one are you going to get so i would say interviewing is the key way come up with a good set of interviews a good set of questions to ask ask for resumes ask for references ask for example work they've done maybe pay them as a 1099 to going to do a bit of work for a week or a weekend and see what they can do and test them out uh, something that kind of has you check they actually can do what they say they can do or they're willing to learn a thing and then going to do it okay and so even before you employ them you can put some checks in place you know to going to see how good they are and then uh, if you're careful now some companies do this you have to check with your labor laws labor laws are very important to okay? uh, do not violate a labor law uh, but some people put them on a trial run like a 90-day probation period and so they make that a legal kind of contractual thing we'll employ it after the, the interviews uh, will employ you for 90 days again okay? and then this uh, kind of check if you're doing great then yeah we'll keep on employing you if you don't then you know whatever the reason is we won't employ you but that gets into serious labor law issues so kind of check that if you don't want to worry about that then just make sure your interview process is thorough kind of friendly constructive and helps you check out that they're a good fit for you for from a personality kind of teaming perspective and a skill perspective too Thank you for watching the video. I just shared some ideas of things people do and not do, particularly from a legal perspective, which is more risk averse. Okay? Uh, I have been in business for 35 years. It seems to work pretty well for me, um, being risk averse, not having loans and stuff. Uh, but your situation will be different. So all I'm really kind of saying is think about your situation and do some math and calculations uh, to end up with a good decision for you. If you like this particular video, uh, you might like the one on the left, uh, which is how to pay off a debt for a small business. And the one on the right, how to increase sales. Again, negative and positive kind of cash. Thank you. Put questions and comments down below.